thing you hear and read about inter-service rivalry and its detrimental effects. There's actually a lot of fine teamwork between the services uh, when it comes to getting things done. Twenty minutes later, Dr. Porter opened the question and answer session by introducing three of the key men in the success story of Explorer One. Credit for the technical part of this achievement than any others in this country. First, Dr. Werner von Braun, Director for Development Operations of the Army Ballistic Missiles Agency. Dr. von Braun, would you rise, please? Uh, Dr. Uh, James A. Van Allen, head of the physics department of the State University of Iowa, who is chairman of the working group on internal instrumentation of the panel for the Earth Satellite Program, Dr. Van Allen. And uh, Dr. William H. Pickering, director of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory of the California Institute of Technology, chairman of our working group on tracking and computation. These three gentlemen have all had a direct and important part in this achievement. <laughs> now, if you would like to address your questions, uh, I will try to repeat the question, and uh, uh, we'll ask uh, the one of these gentlemen best qualified to answer it for you. <clears throat> Dr. Von Braun, how many stages in the device? We have a total of four stages. The first stage is an elongated redstone missile. You can show it, Bill. An elongated redstone missile with extra long tanks and a special fuel combination, which uh, uh, burns for approximately 140 seconds, 145 seconds. Um, after cutoff, immediately after cutoff, we separate the front portion of this missile, the so-called instrument compartment, from the tank section. And this equip uh, this uh, instrument compartment is equipped with a special attitude control system, as we call it, that aligns this portion, including this spinning launcher in the nose, into an exactly horizontal position. Once this uh, nose section with the spinning cluster configuration in the nose goes through the apex of the trajectory, the top stages are fired. And there are three solid rocket stages in the top. So it's a four-stage vehicle. How does this altitude compare with the Sputniks? Uh, this is um, somewhat greater than the uh, altitude of either Sputnik 1 or Sputnik 2. Uh, the question is, has any form of life been placed in the satellite? Um, I think I could answer that one almost myself. Not intentionally. <laughs> Maybe we have a Florida cockroach in time, we don't know. Everybody welcomed the touches of humor, for it was, after all, an hour of jubilation. Just one more came the inevitable plea from the photographers, and exhausted as they were, the trio obliged with what was to be the page one spread in newspapers all over the world. In plain language, the United States was in the space business along with the Russians, and Explorer One was the beginning. Just under two months after Explorer One was put into orbit, and close on the heels of a successful firing of the Navy's vanguard, a launching pad at Canaveral awaited another Army satellite Explorer 3. The Army's first success had not washed away the rocket men's humility, for there are a countless number of things that can go wrong in the operation. And indeed, Explorer 2, fired successfully, had failed to go into orbit because of one tiny component in the last stage. Maybe that was why along the Florida beaches, many fingers were crossed as eyes stared toward Explorer 3. Shortly before launch, the upper stages are set rotating. If the spin were not provided, the payload would be hopelessly deflected.
Explorer 3 was reported in orbit. Again, news flashed instantaneously throughout the world, in every language, to every country. And wherever the news went, it had an effect of transcendent importance. The scientific and technical prestige of the United States was enhanced. People everywhere knew the free world would not be left behind in the all-important race toward outer space. Now, Americans could once again look up toward their future with faith and with confidence. And so two explorers were in orbit. Momentous achievements made possible by the close cooperation of the Army with some of the best technical and scientific minds in the land. As these satellites raced through the uncharted upper atmospheres, there would come a steady stream of information to enrich our knowledge of the worlds about us. The infinity that lies far, far beyond the wild blue yonder. Now, this is Sergeant Stuart Queen, your host for The Big Picture. The Big Picture is an official television report for the armed forces and the American people.